I know the O'Briens. The O'Briens are at a wedding today, I think. But Megan O'Brien is here. Hi, Megan. She came Hello, here. Senior. Hi. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. Good to see you. Monsignor, since uh, James can't be here today, Margaret will take both of the readings. Perfect. Perfect. And Monsignor, um, if you get a chance, throw in an extra blessing for me. I just had my 89th birthday on Thursday. Happy birthday. 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 Happy Thank you. I will. We'll Thank pray you. for you. Oh, and I'm going in for knee surgery this week, Bob. So what? What's the surgery? Uh, knee, knee, knee surgery. Knee, knee replacement. Knee surgery. So I'll be able to. What? One or two. Just one, one knee. Two. One knee. Just one. Just one. Where are you doing, are you doing that? One day. One knee. Uh, at Kaiser and uh, here in uh, Oakland. Oakland. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Very good. Good morning, Monsignor. Who is that? Identify Carol yourself. Carol Roder. We're sitting hey. here in the dark. No power. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> well, you must I have need those, I need those techies. I'm on my phone. I couldn't get the iPad even oh. uh, to connect. So um, anyway, we're getting the rain like crazy. No power. Yeah. So where, are where, are you, where are you located, Carol? We're, we're in San Rafael in a little area called Country Club at yeah. the top of the hill where we get all that horrible wind. Uh, you know, right. Luckily, no trees have gone down. That's what's next. So, so anyway, it's fun, but we're getting the rain. So San Rafael Country Club, not Novato Country Club. Yeah, San Rafael. Rafael. Okay. Uh, up Summit there at the top yeah, of Summit. I know exactly. Got good friends up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so, and we're in Novato yes. Country Club, Joe, so we have uh, lights, yeah. but we'll run down with flashlights for you, Carol. That would be Marin Town and Country Club. <laughs> oh. no. Joe, that's way old. You, that's way old, Joe. <laughs> old? I'll call you, but nothing works. No phone, no nothing. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. you're, you're clever that's... to be with us here. Yeah. On, well, your, I'm on, the phone. on your phone. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I didn't want to miss it, because Monsignor. How was JD this week? That's just what I was going to tell you. I. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. I had a wonderful visit, and we went over all the details for everything. And it's just, um, yeah, it, it was a wonderful visit. I, I hope I can see him again, but we'll never have what we had these last few days. It, it was great, and some of the other family came in, but. He and I had a lot, a lot of alone time that he requested. So thank you for the prayers. They were. Is he on hospice? Uh, no, no, not yet. No, he's he's going through the chemo and all that. But they so, they give him like five months, but they don't know. And I, I don't think the chemo will last too long. Um, you know, it's, it's spreading pretty quickly. So <laughs> thank you, so everybody. Good, so good of you to take the chip out there. Uh, oh, Pat, Kathy O'Brien, yeah, Mary, Mary Ann Papp. Oh, the Olsons, Sue. It's, uh, it's Kathy's um, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kathy. Happy birthday, birthday today. <laughs> happy birthday, so, Kathy. Happy birthday, Ann Kathy. Lenny. Oh Lenny Good morning, morning Monsignor. Mike Painter. Good morning. Good <laughs> Good morning, Monsignor. This is Casey Lolich. Hi, Casey. I'm a um, Uncle Jim's niece, Megan's cousin. Okay. Um, I wanted you. to show you. I wanted to show you Evelyn. This is who you blessed a little over a year ago. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Her voice sounds very good and strong. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you say hi. Hey, Mark and Heidi. Good to see you too. Good morning, Monsignor. Good morning. Good to see you. How's the restaurant business doing these days? Good? She's on mute. She's on mute. She, she, she shut down the airport. Yes, it's busy. So busy and wonderful. Thank you so much. Good, good. Glad to hear that. Rod Besselow, welcome. And as per uh, uh, Sue and uh, Dan Olson, you know, they informed me that Tim Nevin died this past week, and uh, 
we have been in touch. There's going to be a memorial service out at St. Mary's in Bolinas at the end of the week. So we have been praying for Tim since the beginning almost of, uh, of COVID. So uh, um, and he was surrounded by his daughters when he died out in Stinson Beach. So God bless him. God bless him. Excellent. Tim used to come every sun uh, Sunday. Some of you may know this to St. Vincent's. But he drove in from Stinson Beach. How long is that? About an hour? Oh, yeah. <laughs> long. Well, it's a long way at any rate. Yes. And he went to St. Vincent's and then we back to his car one day, <laughs> one Sunday. He lost his keys. Oh, I remember. So his good friends, the Olsons, got in the car, drove him back to Stinson Beach where he got his keys and he drove back. That was that was Tim. He used to, it was heroic, his little journey up to St. Vincent's. God, God give him rest. Amen. Well, I can't find my car keys right now, so <laughs> say <a> prayer. <laughs> Be right there, Mike. <laughs> I have a second set, but it's the main set that's missing, and I don't know what happened. Anyway. Okay, Michael, did you ask St. Anthony? Because St. Anthony always yeah. helps to find things. My mom told us that when we were kids. And I have, I have. All the time. Oh, well, then, keep, then you I'll have to send it. You, you have to send a little money when you find it. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know whether he always does. Today at mass, we a mask. We don't wear masks, but the priest has to wear it, giving out holy communion. And I knew I took the mask and put it in my right hand pocket. So I'm getting ready for communion, and it's not there. Oh, oh, said, oh. To myself, quick. Yes, and Anthony, come on. Let's have a little action here quickly. And uh, at any rate, you know, the altar server had to go back and a mask. And oh, so yeah. It was a long mask. At any rate, I went back to my seat. And there it was on the floor next to the presider's seat. So the good news, he did find it for me. The bad news, it was too late to Thank do much good. So. <laughs> I'm giving him no credit today. <laughs> How are we doing? How are we doing with time? Uh, That's about nine Jim Ryan is four. not here, but Michael is Michael is, uh, is leading us today. Indeed. Where's Michael? I'm here. Oh, I don't see you. Oh, uh, you're, you're a separate. I promise yeah. you, I'm not with Margaret. I'm on another computer. You're on another computer. Okay. Do you keep going so. in and out on us? Oh. Okay. Well, hopefully you'll be able to hear the uh, hear us when we get started. Are you ready, Monsignor? We're all set. We'll tell okay. you, we'll start with this I'm going to mute everybody and then we'll start with the cry of the poor. <laughs> Spirit crushed God will save will 
Wow. Look at this. 94. In the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Friends, welcome. Welcome to Our Lady of Zoom today. I started off the Mass in New Jersey earlier this morning. It was beautifully sunny. Nothing better than an October sunny day in the East Coast. And I said, it's a great day for a hike, a great day for a football game, and a great day to worship God. Well, for you guys in California, it's not a good day for football or for hiking, but it is a good day to giving thanks to God for life and all that we have. Uh, today, the gospel is the story of Bartimaeus, a blind man who approaches Jesus with faith and cries out, have mercy on me. And we always approach Jesus first at the Eucharist by putting those words of, of uh, Bartimaeus on our lips as we say together, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase our faith, our hope, and our charity. Make us love what you command, so that we may merit all that you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The prophet Jeremiah lived about 600 years before Christ. Uh, he lived at a time of, in which Israel was threatened by the great Babylonian empire. And Jeremiah had warned that the country was going to be devastated, as in fact it was around the year 596. The Babylonians swept down, destroyed Jerusalem, and took off most of the priests, the royalty, and anybody who was anybody was exiled to Babylon, which is current day Iraq. But I, uh, Isaiah is sometimes called a weeping prophet because he's always predicting uh, not good things happening. But in this passage here today, he makes a, a far-sighted prophecy. He predicts that the Jews will, in fact, come back to their holy land. And in fact, they do about three generations later, around the year 520. They came back. Uh, one empire, the Babylonian Empire, gave way to the Persian Empire. And the great king of Persia, Cyrus, uh, wanted everybody in his kingdom to worship their own gods. So he sent the Jews back to Jerusalem to rebuild their temple. And so uh, Isaiah has a beautiful piece of poetry here. You can imagine exiles, generations of exiles, coming back and rebuilding their city. And this, is, this particular passage is mentioned because uh, Jeremiah includes not only the healthy come back, but the blind, like Bartimaeus, and the lame will come back, women with children at the breast. God will be faithful to his words. And after the return from exile, the Jews enter one of the great moments of their history. I'm sorry for that long introduction, Margaret. Thank you. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Anna, uh, this particular psalm today, we're almost sure, 
It was written by the first exiles who left Babylon and came back to Israel. And it's a, it's a wonderful song of thanksgiving and joy for the return from exile. Anna? Responsorial Psalm. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. <clears throat> we continue with the reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Uh, the only the only letter in the New Testament whose author we don't know. It was almost certainly a Jewish Christian priest, a, a Christian uh, who had Jewish roots, as the community in Jerusalem was almost all Jewish. In the year 70 AD, there was the great second great disaster for the Jewish people happened when the Roman legion swept down on Jerusalem and destroyed it. That was because the Jews three years before had revolted. And Rome never handled revolt very well. And so the, the city was destroyed. The temple was torn apart. And that and the summer of 70 AD was the last sacrifice ever offered in the great temple of Jerusalem. No more lamb sacrificed. The, priest, the priesthood literally died out at that point. Today, we, uh, Jews do not have priests. They have rabbis who were teachers. Uh, but the, the whole priesthood died out. The temple died out. And that caused great consternation. But the author to the Hebrews made one of the great insights of the New Testament. He said, we don't need a temple as Christians. We don't have a place where we meet God. We meet God whenever we're in the presence of the person of Jesus Christ. We don't need sacrifice because Jesus' one sacrifice on Calvary is renewed constantly. It's an eternal sacrifice. He is the great high priest. And unlike the priests of the Old Testament who were often weak and fallible and needed to ask for pardon, Jesus is the perfect high priest who endures forever. Margaret. The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weaknesses, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed death and brought to brought life to life through the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. To me, maybe the most, one of the most, if not the most beautiful healing Jesus ever did. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. 
On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> to be blind. As we know, some people are born blind. And many people lose part of their sight or all of their sight going through life. And we all know, I'm sure we all know people who suffer from that as they age. Today we have the story of a blind man. We don't know if he was blind at birth or not. His name was Bartimaeus. He's the only person that I, I recall that's ever healed by Jesus as a physical healing, whose name we know. I'll tell you why in a little bit, so stay tuned. Don't fall asleep. This is a, an amazing miracle for me. It's one of my favorite passages in the New Testament. It's a miracle with many layers, and we're going to look through some of them. First of all, on blindness. I saw a PBS special this week. Maybe some of you saw it. It was the, the latest addition to the uh, PBS series, American Masters. And it was on uh, Helen Keller. I think it was the, I forget the exact name of it, but it was on Helen Keller and her life. And she was a different woman in, in, in a good sense than many people really had expected. She had very definite political opinions, but the American Federation for the Blind <laughs> never allowed her to talk about those. She was an amazing woman, but you know, she never gained her sight. She did learn how to speak, communicate, write, spoke all around the world, but she never gained her sight and she never gained her hearing. It was a miracle. It was the miracle worker, the woman who taught her how to sign language, Ann Sullivan. We, many of us remember that great movie from 1962, The Miracle Worker, and that unbelievable scene in which she first time realizes that the sign for water connects with that reality that she was touching and everything opened for her after that. She went and she was educated. She went to Radcliffe at Harvard and well, just became one of probably the most famous person with a serious disability in the 20th century. She was known all over the world, indeed. We all use blindness though as a metaphor, as a, as a figure of speech. Uh, for ignorance or bias, for example, like she, he is blind to the facts. Or it can be we use this as a metaphor for the ego. That one, that person is blind to the feelings of their family, blind to the needs of those who are so close to them. And we all know blind spots um, in the road. One of the great things uh, in, in modern technology in a car for me is that little yellow light on your left-hand side, which reminds you, do not change lanes, <laughs> even though it looks okay, a car is approaching. And I love it because uh, before we, I had those lights, I had many missed close calls as well. And we also know there are blind spots on the Garden State Parkway, but there are also blind spots in our own lives as well. And we all, I think, are aware of those. And if we're not, people close to us have told us about them. Let's look at Bartimaeus, if we may. Um, well, first of all, this is not only a miracle. It's a very simple miracle. But for me, it's, a, it's an example. The layers are an example of how we approach our relationship with God in Jesus Christ. First of all, Bartimaeus was a beggar. It's never good to be a beggar, whether today or or at the time of Jesus. He was a beggar and he probably had only one thing in the world, a cloak. His cloak was his tent at night. It was a blanket when he needed it, a raincoat. And he no doubt could spread the cloak out in front of him for people coming to Jericho and throwing a couple of coins. 
Jericho is the lowest city in the world, 600 feet. It's in the Great Rift down by the Dead Sea. And Jews often would walk going to Jerusalem like Mary and Joseph from the north, would walk along the Jordan River and then turn in Jericho. Jericho is also probably considered one of the oldest continually um, inhabited cities in the world. And it was always a wealthy city because it was a crossroads, a good place for a beggar to be. So Jesus is getting ready for the Passover with his disciples in a large crowd. And he makes that right-hand turn from Jericho, planning to go up to Jerusalem. Bartimaeus and Jerusalem, by the way, that was a, Jerusalem was about a, it's an hour drive today, but in those days, if you walked it, it was 20 miles up 3,000 feet. I often think of Mary and Joseph with the child getting up that. I don't know how they did it in those days. They probably had a healthier diet than we did. And of course, Bartimaeus cries out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me, have mercy on me. It's an unusual line because Jesus is almost never called in the Gospels, son of David. He is by the angel Gabriel who said, he will inherit the throne of David, his father, forever, meaning he'll be, he will reign forever. So Bartimaeus is not a non-believer. He's a, he's a believer with a, uh, maybe even a certain sophistication of who Jesus is. We don't know any of the background before he met Jesus. And then there's some in the crowd. He's crying out. And some of the crowd is saying, be quiet. It's useless. It's a big crowd. Doesn't make any difference. But then Jesus speaks and says, call him. And then other people say, oh, get up. He's calling you. It's like we have two people in our lives. Some people will always try to discourage us. And other people will do everything to encourage us. And I just love those, that play of those who just tell them to sit down and forget about it. And so Jesus calls him over and asks him, what do you want? It's such an obvious question. Bartimaeus is not going to say, I'd like $25 or <laughs> Lord, I want to see. I want to see. And he's so confident. He jumps up right away. And it's a very little, a beautiful aside. He drops his cloak on the ground and comes to Jesus. That's been interpreted through the centuries as every time we come to Jesus or every time we come to an experience of God, closer to God, something needs to be dropped. Remember Moses by the burning bush? Moses take off your shoes, let go of your shoes, you're on holy spot. And so he drops his cloak and comes to Jesus. And Jesus says, very simply, your faith has saved you. And then it concludes with, he followed him on the way. The church before it was known as the church or Christianity, it was first known in the earliest days as the way. So when it says Jesus follow, uh, Bartimaeus follows Jesus on the way, he became a disciple. And that's sort of unusual because Jesus healed a lot of people. And we don't know many of them, if any, who really became disciples of Jesus, stayed with him, walked with him. Um, so Bartimaeus did. And I think that's why we know his name, because he went up with Jesus to Jerusalem. Remember, if you turn the page of this gospel, this, this, this gospel of St. Mark, the next page is, as Jesus gets to Jerusalem, it's Palm Sunday. And so Holy Week is beginning. And there in tow is Bartimaeus, a new believer in Jesus and, a new, and someone else who can see. But there's two types of sight Bartimaeus gets. He gets physical sight. He's able to see. But he also gets the sight of faith, which is really a way of seeing. It's another miracle. Faith is a way of seeing, a way of seeing God. Some people are blind to God. They don't see, they don't have faith. Faith is a way of seeing ourselves in a much larger context than others in all of creation as well. And I think it's why there are so many miracles in the Gospels of people who are blind gaining their sight. There would come a day when Bartimaeus would die and someone would close his eyes for the final time, as someone would close our eyes for us when we die. And those eyes will turn to dust. But he had other eyes as well. He had other eyes as well that he would see with forever. Remember, St. John in his first letter says, we don't know what heaven is going to be like, 
we have absolutely no idea about what the world beyond is like, other than in this beautiful phrase, we shall see God as he is, see him as he is. It's a beautiful, highly poetic phrase. Maybe some of you remember that well-quoted line from uh, The Little Prince, in which the prince says, the most important things in life can only be seen by the heart. The most essential things are invisible to the eye. Goodness, truth, love, faith. Helen Keller once said, um, and I, I think I'm paraphrasing her, but I, the gist of it, she said, I'm blind. I was born, oh, she wasn't born blind. She went blind when she was young. And I always will be blind. But I know people that can see, but I don't envy them because they have no vision. They have no vision. So my dear friends, let's join Bartimaeus today and ask to deepen our faith. Lord, I want to see. I want to see more deeply. I want to see Christ in a different way as the image of God. And in this Eucharist, we will see Jesus once again, who walks with us on the way, who protects us, and who feeds us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was <clears throat> buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Michael. For all leaders of the church, that they may faithfully <laughs> carry out its mission to gather followers to God by living the gospel of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil servants in our country, that they may hear the Lord's voice and fully use their talents to work for the common good of all races, cultures, and genders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this OLOZ family of brothers and sisters, that we are guided not by sight, but by courage of faith to worship the Father and his Son, Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the blessings of bountiful harvests, the colors of fall in the east, and the early rains to quench the drought in the west, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or homebound, that they are supported and assured by healers with care and ongoing prayers of hope and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, for our friends and loved ones who have passed from this earthly life, that they are saved by their faith to enjoy eternal life in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also remember today, Tim Nevin, we hand them up to the Lord together with several others who have been part of our Zoom community who have gone to the Lord. We want to pray today for Joe Martino and Thanksgiving for another beautiful birthday, for Jim Donahue, that his, his operation this week was successful and he heals quickly, for Linda Shepard, Ted Moyer, Barbara DeBarros, Rod Bessel, Barbara, Didi, JD, Nancy, Claudia, Rob, Donna, Kelly, Karen, Molly, Roxanne. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's entrust our families and our Zoom community to the Mother of God as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all our prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread. You will become for us the bread of life. Lord, by the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have received the wine and offer fruit of the vine work of human hands who have become our spiritual king. Lord, wash me from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O oh Lord, on these offerings placed on this small altar before you. We place it for your majesty that whatever is done by us here in your service may be directed above all to your greater glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal life. And so with angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we say together, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> It is during these moments of the Eucharist that we see, not with human eyes, but we see something far greater through the eyes of faith. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the pomp of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, <clears throat> he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister unto you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may, <clears throat> we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop of all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. When Jesus gave us the Our Father, he asked us, he gave us permission to ask for three things, daily bread, all that we need, forgiveness, which we constantly need, and deliverance from evil, which we need. But before we ever ask for those things, we ask that the Father's will be done in our church, in our world, and in our lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily <clears throat> bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, not be seen in judgment, but through your love and mercy, be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul. May the body of Christ bring you to everlasting life. Deep within us, shed among us, may we ever keep the mind and heart of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May these sacraments, O Lord, perfect in us what lies beyond them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord Amen. be with you. And Almighty with God bless you, protect you, and guide you this week. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Okay. Where's Tom Cullen with the donuts? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Monsignor. Well, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you for the birthday. Ida, I see you there. Nancy, I see you again. Did Gloria? Thank you.